so welcome everyone to this uh, small video tutorial and so uh, I'll be showing you how you can uh, calculate the normal vector for any surface which is specified using three points um, so this is a very simple very efficient algorithm um, you do not uh, need knowledge of very high level mathematics you just need a um, bit of knowledge about vector algebra and that is all you um, will need to get started with this video tutorial and you can use this algorithm to um, calculate the normal vectors for the surfaces, uh, for the um, triangles, for the uh, other geometry, geometrical objects in your OpenGL apl application. Um, so before I get started here, I'll explain the code that I already have written here. So this is just a basic um, uh, OpenGL code to display a simple re rectangle inside a perspective projection. So um, here's the main function. I've done some in initialization with the GLUT library and then there's this initialization function and so this specifies the clear color and enables the depth testing and then specifies the light because what is the point of normal vector um, what is the point of having normal vectors if you do not have lighting in your application so then I enable the light zero uh, and there are two callbacks display and reshape so the reshape callback uh, sets the um, perspective uh, projection uh, you can have the look uh, have a look at the parameters here and then there's a display function which draws a simple rectangle without any normal vectors but um, it is uh, it still doesn't look bad because uh, this is 2d um, so the real difference uh, you'll uh, see you'll see the real difference when you um, have a look at um, three-dimensional surfaces um, that I'll show you in a while when we have finished specifying the algorithm we'll uh, use that to um, calculate the normal vectors for a um, bigger, uh, better geometrical object like a cone here I have the algorithm to draw the cone here as well um, so I'll show you after we have I'll show this to you after we have implemented the algorithm so first we'll um, calculate the normal vectors um, so you can have a look at the vertices of this triangle here three triangles uh, three sorry three vertices and you can um, pretty much uh, figure it out that the normal vector is going to be facing towards us so the normal vector will be 0 comma 0 comma 1 uh, 0 comma 0 comma 1 uh, you can just figure that uh, out um, using these three vertices uh, but when there is a complex shape or the vertices uh, there's a complex shape you uh, need to use a better algorithm to uh, calculate a normal vector so we're going to specify the algorithm here so uh, I'll, our algorithm will work for three vertices uh, but if you have a different geometric primitive like a rectangle or a square you can uh, specify any three of the vertices of that uh, you can supply any three of the vertices of that primitive to the algorithm and it will calculate the normal vector which is a vector which is uh, perpendicular to the surface in which those three vertices lie so let's suppose we have three vertices here a b and c i'm going to explain the algorithm now um, so with respect to the origin the position vectors for this let's suppose this is vector b and this is vector a and similarly this will be vector c so these are just the position vectors and let's suppose we have a triangle primitive here which is specified using these three vertices so now we need to calculate a normal vector for this triangle so now uh, to do that you need to be aware of the concept of the cross product of two vectors so like um, if you have two vectors a and b um, so a is a1 comma a2 comma a3 and b is b1 b2 b3 so the cross product of these two vectors is given by a2 b3 minus b2 a, uh, b2 a3 which is the x component and the y component is uh, negative of a1 b3 minus b1 a3 and the z component is a1 b2 minus b1 a2 so the uh, cross product of these two vectors a cross b is actually perpendicular to the surface in which these two vectors lie so um, we can use this to calculate the normal vector so like if we can figure out these two vectors this vector and this vector and we calculate the cross product of these two vectors uh, let's suppose the cross product of these two vectors is this so this will be perpendicular to this surface so that is how we calcul actually calculate the normal vectors we use the concept of the cross product um, i'll let you know that the cross product is also known as the vector product uh, you're supposed to know that already although um, so now first thing we need these two vectors so for that we'll subtract the vectors we'll do uh, vector b minus vector a which will give us like the final minus initial uh, you might have done this in high school so this will be b minus a will give you this vector so let's name this vector x so b minus a will give you x and similarly c minus a will give you y let's call this vector y this one c 
minus a gives you y. Now we'll calculate, calculate the cross product of x and y. So we'll do x cross y will give you, let's suppose, n. So the vector n will be perpendicular to this surface. This is vector n. So this is our normal vector. Uh, and if you want this vector to be of un unit length, that means normalizing this vector, uh, that is actually pretty simple. Uh, although we'll talk about that in a while, but first we'll implement the algorithm for this cross product and other stuff. First we need a, first we need a function that calculates the cross product. So float. So cross product of two any two vectors. So float a comma float b. So it calculates the cross product of uh, these two vectors and returns it. So first we need a variable to store the uh, result in. So uh, result and we get a float array. Um, so the uh, now we'll calculate the cross product of a and b and we'll store that in result. So uh, I had this sorry. This right here, the cross product. So, um, but arrays, the index of array starts from zero and it goes all the way up to two. So zero, one, two. Uh, here it is one, two, three. But uh, the, for the arrays, it's different. So it'll be a. Uh, the x component will be a one into b two minus a two into b one. And uh, similarly, the y component will be negative of. Uh, a zero into b two minus a two into b zero, and the z component of uh, this uh, result will be a zero into b one sorry b one uh, minus a one into b zero. So this result is actually the cross product of these two vectors a and b and now we'll return this. So uh, this function, what, uh, what this function does is basically it calculates the cross product of any two vectors. Now we need to actually specify the function that will um, calculate the normal vector. Float calculate sorry calculate normal so the normal uh, calculate normal function works for three vertices so this function takes three arguments three vertices um, and calculates a normal vector for that uh, for the surface uh, for the plane in which these three vertices lie so now uh, there is a specific order in which these vertices must be specified so let's first have a look at that here so let's suppose these are three vertices um, we'll talk about another property of the cross product and now there are two vectors a and b so now if we uh, do a cross b sorry a cross b so it's the this direction which is anti clockwise that means the normal vector um, the cross product the resultant of the cross product will be facing towards us but if we do b cross a uh, which will be this side it is the clockwise direction means the normal vector uh, the vector will be opposite to the result which we got in the previous part so a cross b is different from b cross a. So now that means um, if you want the normal vectors to be uh, facing to your side, that means you need to do this thing in anti-clockwise direction. So like this, these are two vectors. You need to calculate the cross product in this direction. So the, spec the vertices specified to the calculate normal function have to be in the anti-clockwise order like a, b, and c. So these are in anti-clockwise order. So the uh, two vectors will be evaluated like this and cross product will be calculated so uh, uh, you need to remember that the when you, whenever you supply your vertices to the calculate normal function they should be in the anti-clockwise order so now let's uh, add the parameter list a float b and float c so these three vertices needs to be in um, need to be in anti-clockwise order a b and c uh, now first thing we have got uh, our a b and c vertices and now we need to calculate the x and y vertices uh, x and y vectors like we had a b and c like this and so we'll have x and y x and y vectors so that there was just um, b minus a 
uh, was x and c minus a was y this was c this was b so uh, we'll um, define x equal to b minus a now we'll subtract uh, b from a so we'll do we'll subtract all the components b0 minus a0 comma b1 minus a1 comma b2 minus a2 so that will give us the x vector uh, and similarly for our y vector we need c minus a and now we have both of our x and y vectors and now we'll calculate the cross product and we'll store it in some variable so i'll call it is sorry result equal to cross product of x and y so now we have the cross product of x and y but before we begin to use it um, uh, we need to return it out of this function first thing so this calculates the normal vector but before we begin to use it we need to normalize the vector now what is normalization i'll give you a basic glimpse although you should have knowledge about it um, so let's suppose that this is our vector and its co uh, components are x, y and z. Now a normalized vector of this vector is actually the vector in the same direction as this vector but the length of that vector is 1. So that's the unit vector in the direction of this vector. So we need to calculate that and that will be our actual normal vector. We just need the, because we just need the direction, we do, do not need the full magnitude of this vector. Uh, so that thing will be our normal vector so to calculate that the basic thing we need to do is let's suppose this vector is n and so the magnitude of this vector that is the length of this full vector will be n modulus so the um, components of the um, normalized vector um, it will be n cap is the unit vector in the, in the direction of n which is n cap so the components of n cap will be the uh, x component of this bigger vector divided by the uh, length of this vector comma y divided by the length and similarly z divided by the length so that is how we calculate um, the unit uh, unit vector in the direction of this bigger vector uh, and now what is the um, length of this vector what is n modulus so if you want to calculate n modulus it is actually pretty simple uh, you use the distance formula you do x square plus y square plus z square and you take the square root of this thing so this will be the length of this vector so, and uh, you divide each component of this vector by this length and that will give you the unit vector the normalized vector in this direction so now we need to specify a function to calculate the uh, to normalize a vector so it will return void because it will manipulate the vector directly so normalize and float um, v will be our vector and first we need to calculate the length so float length equal to square root of now to calculate a square uh, use a square root function we need the math sorry uh, math header file and uh, now we can calculate the square root of x square plus y square plus z square that is v0 into v0 will be x square plus y square will be v1 into v1 and z square will be v2 into v2 so there is a length now and we'll divide each component of this vector uh, by this length so i'll use an iteration for this and so the uh, each component of this vector will be divided by this length so vi equal to vi divided by length this uh, and this normalizes this vector and now we need to uh, call this function in the cross product function if we have calculated the cross product we can normalize this cross product before returning it so normalize uh, Sorry, normalize the result and then we return the result to this calculate normal function and this returns it now we'll actually use our calculate normal function for the to specify the vertices and specify a normal vector for a triangle so I'll do this sorry 
gl normal 3fv i'll use the vector form of this function and i'll use the calculate normal and the vertices are so this is actually the ver uh, array of vertices so vertex 1 vertex 2 vertex 3 th th these are all specified here uh, so vertex 0 1 and 2 and so this will calculate the normal vector uh, which is um, perpendicular to the plane in which these three vertices lie uh, and that will be pretty much all um, we can build this and run the application to see if this is working but it will not have uh, much effect because um, here we are only using a two dimensional object so if you want to see this working on a better object uh, I'll have uh, I have a the algorithm draw to draw a cone and I'll replace this triangle by that and now I'll build and run this and you can see that we have got a cone which uh, has perfect lighting we have, um, the same algorithm was used to specify the normal vectors for this cone so you can see the normal vectors have been specified for each triangular little component um, that um, component of this cone so now uh, I'll show you where the function was called so there in this algorithm to draw a cone here is where we are calling actually calling the calculate normal function so this uh, this are the three word these are the three vertices which specify a single triangular component of the cone and the normal vector is calculated for each of these um, each of this uh, each of these triangular components so this algorithm can be used to uh, specify the normal vectors for uh, bigger mathematical uh, bigger geometrical objects as well um, so this is all for this video and um, hope this helped and I'll see you next time.